Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Impact Today. We are Mark and Victoria Bowling, evangelists and teachers of the Word of God. We're so happy that you decided to join us today. I want to encourage you to go ahead and grab a Bible if you have one and a notebook so you can jot down some notes while we teach. That way you can go back and look it over later and really give the Word of God a chance to get in your heart. And then it'll make a great impact in your life. We also want to invite you to visit our website at globalimpactministries.com. Now, if you go there, you will see a link where you can access all the episodes of this TV show, Impact Today. So please avail yourself to that. Like and subscribe. Yes. Yeah. And, and tell your friends. We want to encourage you, even now, if you're watching this program, to maybe pick up the telephone and say, hey, why don't you tune in to watch uh, Impact Today with Mark and Victoria? Because I know God wants to bless you too. Yes. Amen. God Amen. is in the healing business. Mm -hmm. He's in the saving business. He loves you. He loves your family. He loves your neighbors. He loves your friends. He even loves your enemies. <laughs> That's right. Praise God. And so just please do that. Spread the word. So today we're going to be talking about the past tense of God's word. Yes. There are many scriptures throughout the Bible that are written in the past tense. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to get into. It, it is one of the greatest keys to faith. Mm -hmm. If you want to operate in faith, you need to understand what we're going to share with you today and maybe even next week, depending on how long we stay on this subject. But I know for me personally, when I came across the subject matter of the past tenses of God's Word, mm -hmm. it completely changed my life. Right. Hope waits for a promised blessing sometime in the indefinite future. Mm. Like Jesus is coming back. Yes. It's the blessed hope yeah. of the church. We know that one day He's coming, but we don't know exactly when that is. So that is a scriptural application of hope, right. biblical hope. Mm -hmm. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. We do know He is coming back. Mm -hmm. The Bible says it. So our faith is limited to the fact that one day he's going to come so that we have a blessed hope. Right. Amen. Amen. But when it comes to what God has already promised for us, let me say it like this, what God has offered to us, then we are responsible to when we receive what he has offered. In other words, it's up to us really when we're going to experience the blessing. That's right. Are we going to receive by faith? Right. Apprehend it mm -hmm. and make it our own now? Or are we going to hope that one day in God's timing, yeah. it will happen for us, yes. it will come to us. I'll be healed one day. Right. Um, that thing I desire will be mine one day. Yes. Hope. Hope. It's in the future. So hope waits for a promised blessing for some time in the indefinite future. Mm -hmm. Faith takes what God has promised, paid for, and offers now. Okay. It's important to interject right here, I think, right off the bat, because we have certain words that we use mm -hmm. In our circles mm -hmm. of, you know, people who are word people, people mm -hmm. who believe the word. And you can use these words, but still actually only be operating in hope. That's right. Which means you're not operating in faith. Yeah. So let's just put it out there right now. Yeah. You can say, I believe God is going to heal me. Mm -hmm. That's hope. Mm -hmm. Just because you use the word believe doesn't make it faith. Yeah. Because that's not what Jesus said to believe. Right. Right. Which we're going to get into all that later, mm -hmm. I'm sure. But I believe God is going to heal me is equivalent to saying, I believe God is going to save me. Yes. Well, why hasn't he saved you yet? 
because you haven't confessed and received mm -hmm. what he's already offered. So it's not that he hasn't saved you. You haven't uh, apprehended it. You haven't, um, what's the word? I'm appropriated it. Appropriated it. You haven't appropriated it. It's the same with healing. So you could be using words like faith and belief, but this is where you need to ask the question, where are you putting the responsibility? Mm. Are you waiting on God to someday do something that he promised? Mm -hmm. That means you're waiting on God, mm -hmm. right? Now, some of you might be thinking, but what about all the scriptures that talk about waiting on the Lord? Right. Waiting on the Lord in the scriptures does not talk, does, do not mean in that sense. Waiting on the Lord is talking about a waiter, someone who is it, serving, it, it is serving mm -hmm. right? You're attending to. I'm attending to the Lord. I am spending time in His presence waiting for Him to speak to me. That's waiting on the Lord. Not waiting for Him to fulfill a promise. To fulfill a promise. And, you know, specifically we're talking about things that have been provided for us already by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's right. Anything that Jesus accomplished on the cross, well, it's done. Amen. And so we aren't waiting for God to save us. Mm -hmm. Someday, I believe God will forgive me of my sin. Right. Oh, wait a minute. That's not scriptural. Right. And people can accept that. That that's not scriptural. But you have to understand the same time that Jesus dealt with our sin, he dealt with our sickness and disease. Right. So again, where are you putting the responsibility? What I mean is, if you're waiting for, if you're in your mind, you're waiting for God to fulfill a promise, you've put the responsibility on him. Instead, change it to this. God not only promised but he paid for and offered it to me. And now he's just waiting on me to accept and receive and appropriate that, that blessing. Hallelujah. 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 And you, so... You know, it really takes the pressure off. Yeah, it does. But for so that, that helps me in my life. So like if, if something's not happening in my life, I don't look to God and say, God, where are you? You didn't do this. You didn't do that. No, I look because God can't miss it. Right. He cannot fail. You'll never be able to convince God that he was wrong because he's not wrong. He is perfection. Mm -hmm. And so you might as well just give up and think, oh, wait a minute. If there's anybody missing it, it's me. Right. God's not out to get me. He's not looking. Oh, you're making this mistake, this mistake, this mistake. No, somewhere along the line, my mindset has to change. Mm -hmm. I have to adjust my thinking. I need to maybe learn something else or I need to make a different decision in my life or whatever. I need to make the adjustment because God's not holding back. God is not against us. God is for us. He's wanting you to be healed more than you want to be healed. A lot of times you're just not seeing something that you need to see. Yeah. And once you see it, you know, like we have a phrase here mm -hmm. in the USA, the light bulbs come on. Mm -hmm. well, when the light bulbs come on, that means, oh, now I can see. Yes. And when the revelation light of God's word goes, it comes in your heart and you have that aha moment. I see it. In that moment, you're in the position to receive with the hand of faith. That's right. With, and, with your, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, that's why, a lot of times that's how we pray for sick people. Mm -hmm. Yes, we pray that the Lord would heal them, but we pray that the eyes of their understanding will be filled and flooded with light because it's not our prayer. Our prayers can get people healed, but it's not our prayers that are going to keep someone healed. They need to see it and apprehend it mm -hmm. for themselves. That's right. So that's a lot of times how we pray. You know, when we get prayer requests in, will you pray for my mother? Will you pray for my son? We pray that the eyes of their heart are flooded with light. Hallelujah. Amen. So here's one passage of scripture that shows us the past tenses of God's word. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 says, 
giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Now notice the very first verse says, we're giving thanks to the Father. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the Father, the Father God. What did He do? He qualified us. Or really the original, the Greek would say, He enabled us, has enabled us. God the Father has enabled you to do what? Partake of the inheritance of the saints who are in the light. Now look at verse 13. He has delivered us from the power or the authority of darkness. Mm. The Father God has delivered you from the authority of darkness. You know what that means? That means you don't have to be ruled by Satan any longer. Yes. That means you don't have to put up with demons in your life any longer. That means you don't have to put up with any work of the devil in your life any longer. Why? The Father has delivered you from the kingdom or the tyrannical rule of darkness. And then it says, and conveyed us or translated us. What does it mean to be conveyed? When I hear that word, I hear, I think of the, the, uh, of a conveyor belt. You know, on a conveyor belt, you, in a factory, they place something on the item, uh, uh, or they place an item, excuse me, on the belt, and the conveyor belt moves it from this location to the next. The Father God has conveyed us mm -hmm. from the kingdom of darkness yes. to the kingdom of the Son whom He loves. So we were here, and He literally moves us to another location. Another way, another translation says he translated, translated us. us. I like that even better. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in the Bible, for example, in Acts chapter 8, Philip the evangelist baptizes the Ethiopian and he, they come up out of the water and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit catches him away and he's translated from this location to many kilometers away and he was found at Azotus preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. Moved from here to there in a moment. That's what the Father has done to you and to me when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. Then verse 14 says, because I mean, He's enabled us, He's translated us, He's delivered us, now we have, present tense, redemption through His Son, the blood of Christ, even the forgiveness of our sins. Wow, amazing. Amen. You know, if you only had access to this one small portion of Scripture, mm -hmm. and you really got it, yeah, you could live your whole life on that victorious. That's right. And when you have this, revelation that's in these verses, it will completely change the way you pray. Mm -hmm. You will not be praying, Lord, deliver me. Deliver me, Lord. Deliver me. Deliver me, Lord. Yeah. Because He already has. Yes. And so it changes your prayers really from a, a sense of almost like, Lord, help me to Wow, mm -hmm. God has helped me. Thank you that you have delivered me yeah. from the power of darkness. And then you can turn to the devil and say, go. Amen. See, even though this is all true, he isn't going to give up trying to harass you. Right. He's always there trying to put whatever he's trying to put on you. But when you come to the realization, God's already done something about this. Mm -hmm. He has translated me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. He has conveyed me out from underneath Satan's rule. He has forgiven me of all my sins. I am redeemed right now. Then something should rise up within you and not want to put up with the things that the devil throws at you anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. But this is all true. 
for the believer. Yes. This is all true for someone who has made Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. Maybe you haven't done that yet. And maybe you're listening to all this and you're thinking, wow, I'd like to be in that position. Mm -hmm. I would like to be translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. I would like to have all of my sins washed away yeah. by the blood of Jesus. Well, you can do that right now. Right now, I invite you to surrender your heart and life to Jesus. Mark is going to lead us in a prayer. Pray it with all of your heart and Jesus will come inside and make you brand new. That's right. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him up yes. from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. That's how you enter into his, his kingdom. You could declare Satan's no longer Lord. Jesus is Lord. Amen. I'm no longer Lord. Mm. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So pray this after me right now. Dear Father God. Dear Father God. I come. I come. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I acknowledge. I acknowledge. My bondage. My bondage. My need. My need. For salvation. For salvation. I believe. I believe. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He is your son. He is your son. I believe. I believe. He died on the cross for my sin. He died on the cross for my sin. He was buried. He was buried. And he rose again. And he rose again. Because of my justification. Because of my justification. I confess. I confess. Jesus. Jesus. Is my Lord. Is my Lord. I receive. I receive. Into my heart. Into my heart. Jesus as my Savior. Jesus as my Savior. I turn from my sin. I turn from my sin. And I come to you. And I come to you. Forgive me. Forgive me. Wash me. Wash me. Make me brand new. Make me brand new. I now belong to I you. now belong to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to hear from you. So call the number on your screen. Somebody is waiting to listen to your testimony and to pray with you more. So give that number a call. Just for a brief moment before we end today, we want to remind you, 1 Peter 2:24 by whose stripes you were healed. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. You were healed. We're gonna pray for you right now. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the finished work yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, we thank you that the price has been paid yes. and you offer to us oh, healing. You, we receive it I now. Receive we command all pain, all disease to leave people's lives now. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for miracles. We thank you for your touch. Yes. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to flow right now oh, into Rama people's Hale bodies Hale and diseases are leaving. Yes. Fevers are leaving. Demons are leaving. People are healed. Thank In you, Jesus Lord. Name. We give you praise. Amen. Amen. All glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you and live with eternity. We have another testimony. Oh, I know where I lay the bed. Let her talk. Yeah, the man of Bukol be dumb. Ah, you better not see. I am not here. Then I lay. She's she's asking, can I can she be allowed to to sing a song of, of praising God? I want to hear. Her. Okay, but we want to hear her testimony. Yeah, I read the Guru. I read the Guru. Who be coming? Ben. She has been blind for so many years. But even she went. She has gone to the doctor for her eyes to be operated. But nothing happened. The doctor failed. operation but the doctors failed nothing happening uh, with the doctor operation 
And now, the, yesterday she said, let her come for prayer here. Maybe God will do something. She has been blind for so many years. She has been going without a help. Nobody helped even because she has no child. That, and then, she tried and, and nobody helped. Now when you got any Aka. And we know you were there. We get a lawyer. With her eyes like lightning. Like lightning? Yes. Guy wake up. Yeah. And then she was able to see you and the other person for the first time. Do you remember I prayed last night? I said, Lord, may it be like lightning striking them. Remember that? Yes, yes. Yeah. Praise God. Come on. Are you happy? I know they both when I love the What she said? She said, she's so happy for what God has done for her life. And that's why she's requesting to sing a song of praise. Okay, okay, sing a song. <laughs> Corresponding actions is dead. 
We have a wonderful miracle testimony to share with you that beautifully illustrates that scripture. In one of our miracle festivals, one night as I was preaching, I sensed the power of God was present to heal. And I said, if you're in the crowd and you can't walk or you need a stick or anything wrong with the legs, I want you to get up and start running right now. <laughs> no one got up and started running. What do you do? Well, I just continued with the meeting. We prayed a mass general prayer for everyone. People were healed. They came on the platform. They testified. But as we were leaving, I was still on the platform. The meeting was dismissed. This man comes struggling up the stairs asking for prayer. He said, brother, please pray for me. I'm in a lot of pain. Please pray. And found out later he was it was something wrong with his leg. He had been in an accident, and at the point of the fracture, the bone had chipped into 12 pieces. He was in a lot of pain. Yeah. At that moment, I didn't know exactly everything that was wrong. I just knew there was something wrong with his leg. And I said, well, friend, did you begin to run when I said run? He said, no, I can't. Please pray for me, I believe. <laughs> I said, brother, I am not going to lay hands on you. I am not going to pray for you until you run. And he says, I can't, I can't, but I believe, pray for me. I said, you do believe? Yes, I believe. I said, you heard my message? Yes. I said, the Bible says Jesus took our infirmities, bore or carried away our sicknesses. By his stripes, we were healed. You heard that? Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. I said, good. Show me that you believe and run. And he took off running and he was instantly healed <laughs> by the power of God. Amazing. Amen. Call on the name of Jesus and you will be saved. Jesus is Lord.